Today, I'll be changing the oil in my Freedom Elite, which came with an absolute giga chat of an engine, the 6.8 liter Triton V10. For tools, you'll need a ratcheting wrench with a 5 8 inch socket, possibly a locking oil filter wrench if the filter was screwed on too tightly, wheel chocks, shop towels, and an oil drain pan of your choice, in my case a pair of Crystal Geyser 1 gallon jugs. For oil, I'll be using 6 quarts of full synthetic 5W30 from Walmart. There seems to be a lot of debate online on the amount of oil, but the 6 quart figure is straight from the manual. Too much oil can send your gaskets into the afterlife. The oil filter that Ford recommends is a Motorcraft FL-820S. To start, pop the hood of the engine, locate the release latch here, and prop open the hood. Open the oil cap, chock the wheels, and get under the RV. If there's not enough clearance, you can just use your leveling pads to lift the RV higher. You'll want to prepare plenty of paper towels, as this is a messy job. The oil plug is here, and the filter is located next to the oil pan here. Loosen the oil plug with the wrench, then using a gloved hand, remove the plug and let the oil drain into your container. The last few drops can take some time, so leave it to drain for 10 minutes or so. Having the engine warmed up for 5 minutes before starting all this can certainly speed this process up, but I find it makes things more difficult trying to avoid getting scalded, especially if you're immobilized crawling beneath the RV. Replace and tighten the plug, and move on to the filter. I tried loosening it with my hands, but found it was screwed on pretty tight, so I had to use my oil filter wrench. Oil will start dribbling out immediately, so be sure to have your towels and oil drain pan ready. Take your new filter and fill it up with fresh oil and be sure to oil the gasket as well. Filling it with oil can take a bit of patience as air bubbles escape from it. Screw the filter on. I couldn't get it to feel quite tight enough with my hands, so I gave it an extra one eighth of a turn with my wrench. I'm sure this won't cause any problems to whoever's doing the oil change next. Put the oil in through a funnel, replace the cap, and you're finished. To check the oil level, look at the dipstick and look for the second hole to be covered in oil. This is the full oil indicator. This oil change is good for 7500 miles, but probably less than that if you're regularly towing a vehicle. I then transfer the old oil into the oil jugs so that the oil doesn't inadvertently eat through the plastic, and dispose of it at the nearest car parts store. With this, I've given this engine what it needed, and avoided having to basically drag my entire home to a specialized shop. Until next time, thank you for watching.